That is a Trump Cyrus coin. That's what that is in my hand. So I'm headed to the old city, and I'm headed towards the uh, I'm headed towards the Jewish quarter. Going to attempt to buy one of the Trump Cyrus coins if I can find one. A lot of people said these coins were actually a conspiracy. These didn't even exist. Uh, these are literal coins minted in Israel. This is a half shekel. It contains, I believe, 10 grams of silver, which is by the book. By, by the book, what in, in, uh, that would be by Levitical law, what this coin would need to contain. This is what you would pay as the temple tax. And these things really don't, have not been easy to find. But I've got Shadi looking for them. I'm looking for them. So I got numerous people sort of working on it. And I'd really like to find one if I can. Guys, which way the Jewish quarter? This way? Okay. It'll be a half shekel. This is a third temple. That's what the image is that is on the back of this coin. And you have Trump and Cyrus. That is the same image of Cyrus that we used in that Trump prophecy video that was put out long before the election. We were having trouble. I, we finally figured it out. And it was actually my friend Scotty Clark and I <laughs> working together um, here while I was wandering through the old city and all this. But Scott actually came through. He figured, he figured out where he knows about the temple stuff, man. In fact, a lot of these presents that were bad enough to help they may have been involved in bad. Some of the good things they did were because there were people prophetically saying, wake up, dude, look at this. And they would listen. God honors a guy, even dumb people. He honors me, I'm a dumb guy. This looks like the entrance of some type to this place. I'm going to see if, uh, if there's anybody in here. Hello? Hello? Eight back there is a number of new beginnings. Certainly been lots of those in my life. God will even honor idiots like me, like me. Probably often like you, probably not so much you as me because I'm an idiot all the time. Because sometimes they'll be shaken enough to listen to the Lord. I actually pray that, Lord, let me not be stubborn to your, even in my own idiocy, I may go this way and that, but protect me from my own idiocy. Well, I've got the number eight going up there. This is the number of new beginnings. This is the coin of a new beginning, a third temple. Okay. Wow. Trump and Cyrus again. Trump and Cyrus. Okay. Okay, these are what I want. All right. This, this is the Mikdash here. Okay, what does that mean, the Mikdash? Can you tell me? Tell me. That's, it's for the third temple. Okay, that's the third temple. That's, the that's what this is. And I think we've made arrangements with these folks. I've got a limited number of these. We're going to put some of them up. I got coins that I got from the first batch that were ever printed. And I physically went myself, Trey Smith, and hunted them down. I've got quite a number of them. I've got more than is in my palm here. <laughs> the temple. And this is a half shekel, which would be the coin you would use for the temple. For the temple tax. Right. We use the money that we have uh, for the temple from the coin to build the third temple. But I'd like to offer, I'd like to make some of these available. We are the ones that put up the video on Trump's side. And now there's a coin, a third temple coin with Trump's face, a Cyrus's face. Cyrus put in, without Cyrus, you wouldn't have had the second temple. You're waiting for the third temple. You are waiting for the third temple. I'm holding the coins in my hand that they said were a conspiracy and didn't exist. I'm holding one. There it is right there. Wow. This is it. And this is the third temple. Okay. And on the flip side, you have the Trump and Cyrus. Okay. All right. How many of them do you have? This. Will Trump, what does a setting of a stage mean for the end times? Well, for the end times, you need that temple right there. And this applies even the Islamic prophecies, this applies the Christian prophecies, and this applies the Jewish prophecies. All of them should have an interest in this. To get there, to get all of, all of, it. if we're following our prophecies honestly, any of us, and everybody's got their prophecies.
Whether I'm right, you're right, and but hear me on this. Let me tell you this. For any of those prophecies, no matter what you're listening to, to come true. You need the puppy on that back of the corner. Don't you? Now hear me, please. The giant of death, the giant, the giants that have come, the brothers of Goliath. Stand in glee watching America. He we will cripple you. This very day. You will lose your credit. That she should be there. And that her mother should be there. And the group of people down there that are filming should be there. So she's actually living prophecy. That's what she's doing. But her dad also prophesied the coming together of the United States and Israel, which actually happens today. Today. And he gave three prophecies. God in a nutshell has, now let, let's call it a friendship, a direct line of communication with the Sanhedrin, a friendship with the Sanhedrin in Israel. They are, these are the, this is the top, top, top of all of the rabbis. These are the very men that will put in that temple on the back of that coin with Trump on the cover of it. These are the men that will organize the building of that, that temple. The Sanhedrin will organize that. And in fact, within prophecies that her father gave, you'd find many layers to those prophecies. For example, uh, for example, he will take a simple stone, and and he said, "Remember the name," is what Kim said. And they shall say, "What is your plan for this this giant?" And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. Were you, in fact, a lonely voice on that issue? Well, I didn't hear any other voices, uh, but I'm not going to, I'm really not going to divulge my internal conversations. I have a confidentiality agreement, uh -huh. uh, and I have no intention of violating it. So my private advice uh, to uh, Trump will remain private. And he will take a simple stone, remember the name, and he will hold it up and they will laugh at him. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> um, that's not going to happen. Trump will not become president. He's not going to be president. He is not. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. Take it to the bank. Okay. I guarantee it. All right. All right. You think if he becomes the president here, make, make it great because the states is already great. I think that man will be president of the United States right about the time that spaceships no, come down no, filled no, with no, dinosaurs no, and red capes. On that note, <laughs> President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. The Sanhedrin, this is the top, top, top of all the rabbis, this was reformed, the guys who put in the third temple, those guys. These were reformed, I find the dates interesting, 14 years ago. They were reformed this year, 14 years ago. They're also, one of the things that they have offered to do through another mutual friend of mine and a friend of those Sanhedrin, close friend of those Sanhedrin, my friend, David Decker. To immediately submit to DNA tests to determine <laughs> to determine whether he is, in fact, the love child of a human woman and an orangutan from the Brooklyn Zoo. <laughs> They're doing something very unusual. They asked me to be one of the first. They asked God in a nutshell to be one of the first to announce to you that they are on September 3rd of 2018, which on their religious calendar would be Elul 24th. 24th. They're going to put together what is going to be called the World Creation Concert. They're actually calling in from all across the world, not just Orthodox rabbis, but Gentiles. They're asking the Gentiles to come in and worship Hashem. Hashem. So if you've ever watched it, if you've got it, you need to get a copy of the God Dimension because we go through a lot of this stuff, the importance of letters, of symbols, like what's going on on the back of the screen, and their affiliated numbers. And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. And he will hold it up and they will laugh at him. 
The American people deserve some real proof that your mother did not spend most nights in 1945 covering her body in banana oil, sneaking into the monkey cage, and compulsively humping an orange hair day. But he said some horrible things, and really horrible things about my parents who were deceased and great people, who were fantastic people, married for 63 years, you know, just great, great people. And then he made an offer on the show, and that involved my birth certificate and other things, and it was a $5 million offer to charity, and I immediately accepted his offer, sent a legal letter to him by a very good lawyer, who told me you have an absolute case as soon as you accept his offer, and so we essentially sent him a bill, a legal representation, for $5 million. So he has to pay. I don't know if he has $5 million. Maybe he doesn't. And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. Now, Trey, um, I specifically recall you're making a powerful documentary about essentially biblical uh, prognostication and prediction of the successful election of Donald Trump. Tell us about it. Roger, it's larger than that. We ain't You'd find many layers to those prophecies. For example, uh, for example, he will take a simple stone and, and he said, remember the name, is what Kim said. And even in the video that I put up, I had noticed that. What does that mean? Well, Donna came and she said, you know what? Who is a person named Stone? And then she said, I'm, I'm drawn to look at this Roger Stone man. Do you know that Roger Stone was who put Donald Trump on the ballot all three times? I was very worried about putting that up. The reason I put that up, what, there were people from, there are a lot of prophet, a lot of people yell, I'm the number one prophet, I'm the number, and that's, I might tone that down if I were them some. Uh, I'll work on that a little. I, the, I can work on my own stuff, bold statements, that it is stupid things come out of my mouth a lot. Uh, the, the number one prophet, uh, your end times prophet, if you will, in my view, would have been Kim Clement. And I hope that there is, um, I hope there's a movie, not a small movie, but an actual large movie that's made about Kim's life because all of the, all these other prophecies, that, and guys with books, guys on the major Christian magazines, got all sorts of guys and say lots of things. Nice people, I know some of them, wonderful people also know little grandmothers from here to Timbuktu that many, many there were many things I wished after the fact I would be like wow why didn't I put these people in the, uh, almost different sets of people in the video because do you know that do you know that uh, Kim Clement for Mel Gibson did his uh, passion the Christ uh, as, I, as I understand he and Mel Gibson were actually actually Mel Gibson could play Kim Clement the older Kim Clement and you look at the two and you're like, wow, they stunningly look similar to each other. Um, but Kim had given Mel Gibson a prophecy that he would do one of the most successful movies in all history. It would be a biblical film about Jesus, is what I understand. Mel could probably better tell you than I can what exactly that prophecy was. But it's further my understanding that during the filming of the entire Passion of Christ, he had that prophecy in his pocket kept that prophecy from Kim Clement. And it, this was the number, that's why I banked on I got a prophecy from Kim that I've held in my pocket, just like Mel Gibson did. And I knew it was right. That's how I knew who the president was gonna be. The guy that was bad mouthed from here to Timbuktu, Kim Clement, everybody called him a false prophet. Well, all the way back in 2007, he was stating this man, Donald Trump, was gonna become president. And, um, and I listened to that. And the, the core of people that I would listen to, that's what they believe. So privately, I put together um, uh, a compilation of reasons, prophetic reasons, uh, why we believed that Trump was gonna win. Why the, more than that, that we believe that the Lord was actually putting this man in the place that, that he was. And uh, his prophetic gift wasn't confined to when he was on a platform, it was everywhere he went. Even the way he lived was prophetic. It was just a continuation. And, and the beauty of the garden. Look at the Dome of the Rock back there. Are you, are you able to see that in the yeah. background? We're standing here. We're standing here and the Dome of the Rock is right there. And this is the 70th anniversary. That's a seven. And her dad predicted the date of that embassy move. And we're standing here in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
right up there is the old city, the city of David, the Dome of the Rock is sitting right there, and we're waiting for the third temple. And her dad not only prophesied that Donald Trump would be president of the United States, which he is, and he prophesied two terms. So we're expecting that. That doesn't mean that you don't go vote. You get up and off your chair, off your hiney, and you go vote next time. Make the prophecy real. Live it. And each one of these, I'll hear sometimes on the things, I'll see in the comments, being, oh, you're just doing this for a dollar, whatever, and you're thinking to yourself, what are you talking about, man? So, some of these, some of the art, like Noah, but I've got him. Yeah, I've got Noah right here. This entire thing, this entire thing was put on YouTube. For, it took me about 12 months, 9 to 12 months. I didn't have anybody working with me at that time. 9 to 12 months. And these aren't like little bitty days here. This is like, back then I was overwhelming. You know, I'm still a workaholic. I've asked the Lord to help work with me on that some. But back then, this is like, when the eyes open, you can see in some of the shots, I barely got my hair combed, man. I might not have even showered. But I'm, I'm, I'm just going full force uh, to get it there, not even knowing where the income would come from. And even on our partnership stuff, we're not as consistent, maybe, as I'm working on it, because I know that's only fair to you on the other side, that there's some rough schedule of, hey, we're doing this. Trying to do that. This used to drive my family crazy when I was growing up, and teachers and everything in classes. And that's just one. And that's just one that prophecy. September sixth, two thousand fourteen. Last night was four hundred thousand people on the streets of Jerusalem. What's interesting to note here too is that one year later, one year and one day later is when he had the first brain hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. And he had three. Seventh, he had three. Two thousand fifteen. He had three, and you and three. But the things are unusual, and I believe that the Lord. I think you have to leave room in things, and I think the Lord has allowed that. There's the eight, the number of new beginnings has allowed room for that, for the spirit to flow so that there can be not only a Noah, but so that it really can be the best one. So it really can be something you kick back for three hours and you're like, wow, that blew me away. Let's do it again. I think I missed a bunch of stuff. Or the same thing with the God dimension. Or the same thing with the theory of everything, which by the way, a high quality, I can't say HD because it's not quite that, but a version I've never put up before, we're going to put in that partner section. There's already full-length documentaries that are on there that aren't even in these sets that I'm holding in my hand. This was a Nephilim bonus disc. I did that whole Nephilim video. I decided to do that in like two days. I made the decision I'm doing a Nephilim. It's like the Lord moved on my heart. I had in my mind to do something else. I began setting in on making uh, what was probably the best present. They're all the best presentation. Because a lot of... Uh, uh, actually to save the country and um, and that's so on this end of the fence that's uh, that's what what we believe in as far as I know it is the largest view pulling uh, video in, in terms of a prophecy on on Trump tell us the name of it so folks can go see it um, how is it listed? Trump Trump prophecy it, it'll come up number one oh. uh, Trump prophecy of Trump uh, well uh, Smith my, I'm a believer I think people don't understand the extent to which Donald Trump has given up a great life. He he didn't need to be president to be somebody. He already was somebody. Yeah. We could use your help. That's where I'm going with this. So I'm thankful for every single person that comes over and clicks that little partnership button. There's stuff in there that's unlike anything in the world right now. That's where this comes. Right this second. There's stuff over there for less than the cost of one movie ticket. There's stuff over there that has more cuts in it took more time and more locations and more of what it was even at the very beginning with the theory of everything even with crummy cameras sitting there wiping sweat off between each shot making these graphics to sort of have it done it has content that I believe isn't just from a bunch of research it's because the Lord leads it it's because the Lord leads it and that's what you, that's what you're supporting. If you feel like doing that, read these Facebook history. posts that she yes. puts you up. You can follow the house. Go and they're digging through things, and they have crews of people to look at these prophecies.
from the man who told you who the next president would be. If that's not important, I don't and know. He what said we'll... that back in 2007. He said Trump would be a trumpet. In that 2007, in that. In 2007. 2007, and you're here on the 70th anniversary. Yes. And Donald Trump, when he was actually inaugurating, put his hand on the Bible, right. which was an actual Bible. He was 70 years Mother's old, Bible. seven months and seven days to the day. Mm -hmm. On the different things, including the stuff that's up there, some of the best I've ever made. When you do that walkthrough that's on here, it's titled Satan, Angels, Fallen Angels, and Devils. You're going to watch the occult spread from the ancient world with precision and understand how that worked and actually watch it and the fall of those angels. Why Jesus did the things that he did. The next one we're working on is a little larger in scope. We're also working on the Exodus under the partnerships, under the partnerships. Even if you're not going to go watch a film, we can actually use your help and support if you enjoy the films. That's a way for you to actually play a role in this. I've made a section over there where you can decide, you can make that number if you feel like we've sown something into your life, please. We can. There were times making this stuff where I didn't even know where the income would come from. I'm just hearing this now. In the highest court in the land, the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court, two shall step down for the embarrassment of what shall take place. For I wish to place in the highest court in the land righteousness. And they shall attempt to put others in to endeavor, to reach their endeavors. But God says, hear me tonight. Hear me today. I have this whole thing planned out according to my will. For it is now time for me to restore the fortunes of Zion. The fortunes to those that had it once, you are going to get it back. This is my promise, says the Lord of hosts. Give him a shot. Uh, none of that would have even been possible without a man named Kim Clement. That's where I got the term Joseph period from. It's from a prophecy. Portions of kind of an intense prophecy. I'm not going to go into that. Portions of kind of an intense prophecy that I got from him when I was a kid. I, use, I, I hear this term, Joseph period. Joseph was in Egypt. We'll get to this in a minute. What does Joseph period mean? I think that's important. I want you to understand what I mean when I say that. I, I believe that it was in my follow-up to the Trump video that I looked at the screen and I said, welcome to the, let me be the first, the first to welcome you to the Joseph period. There's reasons why I said that. There's reasons why I said that and what I believe this time frame means and why I said that prior to this guy here on these coins. So this is Trey Smith and Donne, and this is, and Donne is coming through the old city of Jerusalem, and this is Code Breakers, where she breaks down literally not just her dad's prophecies, but there's such a weave work in those. And she goes through, she and, and teams of other people, but the, but the Lord leads her. She's finding what the future is for you. Not in a weird kind of way. The Lord wants you to know that that's what prophecy is. Most of your Bible is prophetic. I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell. And these are, in my hand, these are the Trump Cyrus coins right here. These coins are historic. And I am guessing they probably go up in value as you head towards the next election of Donald Trump and furthermore as you as you actually head towards the prophetic events, the actual third temple, which is on the back of that coin. And it's also through these Sanhedrin that we're making this coin. They are the ones that put together, they are the overseers of these coins. The third temple coin with Trump Cyrus on it. And they're the ones that worked out through mutual relationships, through friendships with them. Worked out the arrangements where you can have one of these in your hand. Not only are you getting these from Israel, not only is this an actual third temple coin, but more than that, you're supporting the, by purchasing the coins, you're actually playing a role in prophecy. You're supporting the coins, you're supporting the third temple, you're supporting Israel, and you're supporting God in a nutshell, all in one black. There are the third temple coins. 
I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you and your families on the other side of this screen. And the shipping on these guys here, all of them, every one of them, look how beautiful that they look. The shipping on these guys, and they'll come in a beautiful box. Our, our, our stuff, actually, over the years, we're one of the few ministries that we've got a really proficient shipping system. It didn't used to be that way, but our stuff today is pretty effective. It's very effective. It's cookie cutter. Perfective. We, we built our own back-end stuff for making sure that these get in your hand. In fact, the shipping is free to, well, as long as you've got a mailbox, we will try to get it to your hands. And that even includes Africa. We made special arrangements to a number of different countries and volatile places to make sure that boxes of this stuff. Uh, and by the way, we really don't make anything when we ship it to a lot of those places. In fact, there's some of them and it actually comes out, looks like it comes out at a loss, but uh, anyhow, shipping is free. I want them to be in your hands. That's part of the reason that, that we make them and that's what supports doing this is when you buy these sets. So thank you and God bless every single one of you that has purchased these or gotten copies of these for a friend, any one of them. And thank you just for watching. The God in Us Shell documentaries and DVDs. I'm Trey Smith, and when I say God bless every last one of you on the other side of the screen, I mean that. plugged a line into that port, and I didn't see that needle pulled out uh, oh, one because time the, one it time the needle I was jerked, out so fast. One time the needle jerked out of you, and the chemo apparently burns through the skin or something. Because I began throwing up, and my mother was there, and, and she was trying to help me on the floor, and all of a sudden these uh, uh, nurses ran in. And, and that and, chemo stuff would have squirted they, everywhere, and, all over everybody. Yes, it would have, and they would have had to take both me and my mother into surgery because Immediately, it would because begin it would burning the skin. Yeah, and going through, uh, yeah. Through so it, like you can imagine thing. these veins, how right, whatever it is that's in that is deadly stuff. There. But the thing came, that thing comes out, and it's just ordered everywhere. And the nurse says, and the and, nurse says, well, and it's the thankful nurse, you were here and knew how to turn off the chemo machine. Yes, she said to mother, and uh, mother says, I'm glad you. Know, knew how to turn that machine off, but she ran on out. Well, he, she came back uh, the, uh, hours later and she said uh, everything was calmed down because they got the... Uh, okay, but, they, but the, 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 the thing would have squirted and she says, thank God you didn't have to turn the machine off. And she says, I have no idea. And, and, so uh, the, and the lady says, an angel must have turned the machine off. She said, I've seen it before an angel was standing by that that machine and uh, turned that machine turned the machine off um, okay take me through grandmother great great grandmother I'm gonna just read a, well, I don't a want couple you of to, lines I, I want you just to walk me through because I want to do a I want to do a short version and she was stolen at the age of seven and returned at the age of 14 seven and 14 you couldn't make these numbers up.